Our meat chickens are three weeks old at this point, and in a perfect world, they'd be going out into a chicken tractor right now. However, we are expecting, I don't know, a little bit of a cold snap, unseasonably cold snap, down to the freezing temperatures. I'm just not quite comfortable putting them out. So the first thing that I've got to do today before we talk about building chicken waterers and chicken feeders and how to get these birds ready for the tractor is to get them ready in the brooder for a little bit, uh, a little bit of colder weather. raise as much of our own meat as we possibly can. Each year we usually raise a beef steer, keep half that beef for ourselves, and then last year was our first time ever doing meat chickens. That turned out absolutely great, and we love chicken, so we are doing it again. And Cornish Cross chickens take eight weeks to grow from hatch until processing day. Each week here, this little video series we're doing um, are different things that are happening, things that happened the week before, or things that we're looking forward to, or some different way that we can prepare to move these birds along that process until ultimately butcher day. If you've never raised Cornish cross chickens before, they grow so quick. I mean, they are just itty bitty tiny baby chickens when they arrive. And then in a few weeks, they're, you know, going in the freezer. A full grown uh, five or six pound bird, or, you know, when they're processed out, it might be three, four, five pounds. It just grow so fast. Cornish crosses are excellent at converting feed into meat, which, you know, is what you want whenever you're raising food to process. So like I said at the start of the video, these birds now are three weeks old, and in a perfect world, if the weather was gonna be like it is right now all week, and if the tractors were currently done, the birds will be getting moved into the tractors this week, so they could be moving throughout our field and grazing and uh, putting all that wonderful nutritional manure fertilizer down as they go. Um, so we can kind of build our regenerative agriculture plan a little further. Now, it's far from, far from perfect, we wouldn't, we even want to call it that just yet but that's the plan this week we're expecting a cold snap temperatures are going to get down below freezing and uh, you know i got a lot of money and effort and stuff tied up into these birds i got a lot riding on them right so let's uh the plan this week is to keep them in the brooder just a little while longer we'll get the uh, tractors done next week and then they'll be out they'll have four full weeks out where they can be moving around on pasture and that'll work out fine one thing you have to consider when you're raising livestock is how to feed them and how to water them. And the last year we used some gutters off of the barn here because they're falling down. What are they good for? We used them to make some feeders. We're going to make another one of those today. My wife said something apparently about having to feed the goats out of them because I won't build a feed trough for the goats. I don't know what she's talking about. She's never even asked me to do that once. And then a, uh, so we're going to build another one of those today and then build a five gallon bucket waterer as well. We're going to have two tractors and so we're going to show the process for what we're doing for the feeder and then the process of making the waterer as well. And then here at the end of the video, we're going to go in and weigh the birds like we do each week so we can track their growth and see how quickly they are growing each week. We decided that on this chicken tractor build, we would make our own waterers. In the past, we've made some with uh, the little cup. I don't like that. So we are going to use the nipple style. We have a couple of other store-bought waterers that use this style of, um, of watering system apparatus. And we're going to use a five gallon bucket and these put a few holes in there. And, and when it's all said and done, each waterer should only cost about $10 or maybe even less. Uh, these came in a pack of 30. It was like 14 bucks or something for the whole pack of 30. We're only gonna use 12. So it's plenty more for the next time we do this because I'm sure there's going to be a next time. The first thing I'm doing is marking out where these holes need to go. Now I'm using a level and a Sharpie just because I wanna make everything as precise as possible. I'm a bit of a weirdo, that's okay. Um, but once that's done, we're just gonna take a drill and a step bit and carefully drill through the bottom of this. It's very thin uh, plastic, very thin material. So it's easy to blow through the bottom of that hole if you do it too quick. So just be careful, know where your holes are going, know how deep they need to go and don't, feel, don't, don't be afraid to test fit that nipple a little bit as, uh, as you go along. little bit of thread tape will help seal this up and also make sure that seal in the hole is as tight and waterproof as possible. Helps it thread in there a little bit too. Make sure when you're putting this tape on here too, you're putting it on so that whenever, as you thread the little nipple in where it's supposed to go, as that screw goes in the right way, 
it doesn't unravel your tape. Lefty loosey righty tighty. And an easy way to remember how to do that is as you just hold the tape, just twist the screw like you would, like, like you're going to screw it in. I mean, it's the same, same direction. Just in case you get your left and your rights confused. It happens. We know all about it. And there you have it. That is a $10 watering can, lid included. And uh, we'll go through this whenever we do our video next week on building these chicken tractors. So well, that'll just hang up from the tractor, just like that. Piece of cake. Now due to my own inability to manage time properly, this is what happened to my feeder from last year, is it uh, kind of got goatified. And that's not, that's not wonderful. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna reuse these same pieces of wood, and uh, I'll link this at the end of the video if you wanna see how we made these last year. I'll link that at the end of the video, and you can build one yourself. Basically, it's not about using a piece of gutter, it's just about using whatever you have available. If you see the little tiny blonde head in the way, that's my youngest son. Using whatever you have available to, you know, just, just homestead. We're just out here farming. We're doing our best and making do with what we got, and it works out. It's not always pretty, and it's not always, like the, the the best thing you could ever do but it's functional and it works out okay the first two weeks we had these birds we were using a tupperware container an old one and a kitchen scale and just bringing them in here picking the birds up, plopping them, up, plopping them down in, and getting away. At this point, that really doesn't work anymore because they don't fit in the Tupperware container. So what we decided to do, we figured this out last year, was to use a, a, a reusable shopping bag. This is a, an old one, or at least a free one, I guess. We use that, and then the kidding scale, or the kid scale we use to weigh baby goats, and it works. And it works surprisingly well. One point two one pounds. Wow. What's the odds of that? One point two one again. This is gonna be a little lighter here. All right. One point oh five. One other thing that we want to mention is these birds, now that they're fully feathered, are basically never on a heat lamp. They're in a really nice brooder where they, they're out of the wind and out of, uh, out of the elements, really. So any kind of temperature fluctuation, small one, I'm not all that worried about. You know, during the day they're fine, and then at night they all get together, they huddle, and they're totally cool. Now this week we may re-examine that heat lamp situation. I might end up plugging it in, because if it's going to get down to 28 degrees, that's just really... <laughs> That's really cold for these birds that I said before in other videos. They're not very hardy. They're not very sturdy. They're just, they're a really finicky critter. So we may end up turning that back on, but for the most part, they are ready to go out. And now that we have their feeders, and now that we're going to end up, well, I guess more some more feeders, we'll end up building a few more. Probably you need two, well, at least one more, and then eventually three more, because once these birds are almost ready to process, it'll take two of those four foot long, uh, feeders per tractor so so I have two over here and then another two in the other tractor they eat a lot so we'll have a few more we'll make those eventually we'll get there and then uh, the water is ready and so the birds are ready the feeders are ready and the water is ready and so now all they need is somewhere to go next week we're gonna build these Chickastoga style chicken tractors I'm really excited to show you that uh, did a little bit of preliminary work this weekend on that I'm excited I may finally well not to say I'm finally getting the hang of it but I got a good, I feel like I got a pretty decent handle on it. You know, maybe that'll come, up, come back to bite me. I don't know. If you want to see either spectacular success or complete and utter disaster, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video. My name's Reagan. This is the GWP Homestead. We'll see y'all soon.